I saw that you got a chance uh, to call Richard Feynman a mentor of yours when you were at Caltech. Yeah. Uh, do you have any fond memories of Feynman? Any lessons that stick with you? Oh yeah, he was quite a character, uh, and one of the deepest thinkers of all time, probably. And at least in my life, the physicist who had the single most intuitive understanding of how nature works mm. of anyone I've met. Uh, he, I, I learned a number of things from him. He was not my thesis advisor. I worked with Wallace Sargent at Caltech on what are called active galaxies, big black holes in the centers of galaxies that are accreting or swallowing material, a little bit like the stuff of, of this year's Nobel Prize in Physics 2020. Uh, but Feynman I had for, for two courses. One was general theory of relativity at the graduate level, and one was applications of quantum physics mm -hmm. to all kinds of interesting things. And he, you know, he had this very intuitive way of, of looking at things that he tried to that he tried to bring to his students. And he felt that if you can't explain something in a reasonably simple way to a non-scientist, or at least uh, you know someone who is versed a little bit with science but is not a professional scientist, then you probably don't understand it very well yourself, very thoroughly. So that, in me, um, you know, made a desire to um, to to be able to explain science to the to the general public. And I've often found that in explaining things, yeah, there's a certain part that I didn't really understand myself. That's one reason I like to teach the introductory courses to the lay public is that I sometimes find that my explanations are lacking in my own mind. You know, so he did that for me. Is there, uh, if know, I could just pause for a second, yeah, you mm -hmm. said he had one of the most intuitive understanding of, yeah, of nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, if you could break apart what intuitive means, like, it, is it on a physical. philosophical level? No, f sort of physical. How do you draw a mental picture or a picture on paper of what's going on? And he's perhaps most famous in this regard for his Feynman diagrams, mm -hmm. which in what's called quantum electrodynamics, a quantum field theory of electricity and magnetism, what you have are actually, you know, an exchange of photons between charged particles, and they might even be virtual photons if the particles are uh, at rest relative to one another. And there are ways of doing calculations that are brute force, that take pages on pages and pages of calculations. And Julian Schwinger uh, developed some of the mathematics for that and won the Nobel Prize for it. But Feynman had these diagrams that he made, and he had a set of rules of what to do at the vertex, you know, you'd have two particles coming together and then a particle going out and then two particles coming out again. And he'd have these rules associated when there were vertices and when there were particles splitting off from one another and all that. And it looked a little bit like a bunch of a hodgepodge at first, but to those who learned the rules and understood them, he, you know, they, they saw that you could do these complex calculations in a much simpler way. Mm -hmm. And indeed, in, in some ways, Freeman Dyson had an even better knack for explaining really what quantum electrodynamics actually was. But I didn't know Freeman Dyson. I, I knew Feynman. Maybe he did have a more intuitive view of the world than Feynman did. But of the people I knew, Feynman was the most intuitive, most sort of, is there a picture? Is there a simple way you can understand this? And in in um in the path that a particle follows even you know you can figure out the you can get the classical path at least you know for a baseball or something like that by using quantum physics if you want but you know in a sense the baseball sniffs out all possible paths it mm -hmm. goes out to the andromeda galaxy and then goes to the to the batter but mm -hmm. the probability of doing that is very very small because tiny little paths next door to any given path cancel out that path. Mm -hmm. And the ones that all add together, they, they are the ones that are more likely to be followed. And this actually ties in with Fermat's principle of least action. And mm -hmm. there are ideas in optics that go into this as well. And, and it just sort of beautifully brings everything together. But the particle sniffs out all possible paths. What a crazy idea. But if you do the mathematics associated with that, it ends up being actually useful, hmm. a useful way of looking at the world.